This is a Pharmacy Podcast Network exclusive. I had the opportunity to sit down with CEO of 12 Stone Health Partners, Shane Reeves, who's running for Tennessee State Senate. Republican Shane Reeves of the vacant 14th District Senate seat in the state of Tennessee, is running for state Senate on the March 13th election with early voting February 21st through March 8th. Shane has a background in institutional pharmacy, business development, marketing, sales, and finance with some interesting strategies in growing that pharmacy business. He began his career in the organization in 1994 when he joined the family business and worked his way up through every function of the company. Under Shane's leadership, moving forward as 12 Stone, the organization has grown into a broad medical service company with a long list of clients across the entire care continuum. Shane commented in a recent article, The Herald News, that he thinks that there's a real different approach to his leadership style and believes he can bring a lot to the state with his experience in healthcare. Here's my interview with Shane Reeves. Hey, Pharmacy Podcast listeners, this is a big deal for me. I look for interesting interviews from technology, pharmacogenomics, um, politics, things that are happening in our industry. There is a man that I've met years ago in the world of institutional long-term care pharmacy, Mr. Shane Reeves, who's running for Tennessee State Senate, and I want to welcome him him to the show. Good morning, Shane. How are you? Todd, I am great, and I, I certainly appreciate you taking the time to, to have me on your show. I'm excited. You know, uh, champions and people that I look up to in the pharmacy industry, those are my uh, rock stars. When I go to these conferences that we have uh, well-known um, Sylvester Stallone and Magic Johnson showing up, um, I don't necessarily get excited about that. I get excited about seeing uh, Buddy Carter at a, uh, at a pharmacy conference because those are those are the people that I look up to. So this is a, this is a treat for me. This is special. And um, uh, if listeners don't realize, uh, Mr. Shane Reeves is a pharmacist, institutional pharmacy veteran. So let's set the stage there first about you. And then let's also share with the listeners your vision for the great state of Tennessee and running for state Senate. Great, Todd. I appreciate, appreciate your kind words. So, Shane, tell us how you got into business, how you became an entrepreneur. Why didn't you stay in the world of let's say, um, national network pharmacies or national chain pharmacies? What made you think, hey, I want to do this myself, go out on my own and build this family business that you did in delivering patient care to our seniors? Sure. So let, let me give you just a, a 30,000 foot view on, on me and my life. So, you know, I live in middle Tennessee, right outside of Nashville, Tennessee. My family has lived, it's a, it's a small community called Murfreesboro, which is right down the road from Nashville. My family has lived in that community for seven generations. Uh, originally moved to this to this area in 1780, which was actually about 16 years before the state of Tennessee was even founded. So my family has lived uh, in Middle Tennessee for generations. My my family has actually been practicing pharmacy for 120 years. Uh, Todd in on our local square around 1900 and over the years, got his son into it, who got my dad into it, who ultimately got me into pharmacy in 1994 when I graduated pharmacy school. I'd been out of school for one month and my dad approached me, Richard Reeves is my dad's name, who's also a, was a pharmacist, approached me and said, son, would you like to buy out my half of the business? Well, I was a 26 year old young pharmacist, just graduating from the University of Tennessee, didn't have any business skills whatsoever, but I uh, you know, knew a lot about pharmacy. And there was another young pharmacist at the time named Rick Sane, who also happened to be working in the community. And he got the chance to buy the other half of our family's business out. So Rick Sane and Shane Reeves, myself, we formed Reeves Sane Drugstore in 1994. I was 26 and he was 29. And we decided early on, and again, we were just truly at the time an independent pharmacy in a small growing community on the outskirts of Nashville, Tennessee that was taking off. And Rick and I decided early on if we were going to survive in the crazy world of independent pharmacy where margins were shrinking and so much was happening around us with chain stores and mail order, we were going to have to do a few things. One, we were going to have to fill a lot of prescriptions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see the margins were shrinking, PBMs were getting a, a stronger foothold. 
So we were going to have to fill a lot of prescriptions. And the second thing we were going to have to do is we were going to have to get some business skills and spend some time working on the business as well as working in the business and to really get serious about what it's going to take to grow a business top line, bottom line. You know, we learned a long time ago that top line is vanity. Bottom line is sanity. I mean, you got to make money, you know, to do this. You just, you can't simply focus on growing your, growing your top line and make this work. We, you know, also from a business perspective, we started surrounding ourselves with some really smart people that weren't necessarily pharmacists, but they were, they were great in finance, great in technology, great in operations, great in HR uh, and building people around us in those mid nineties. So we said there were three things. First thing is we needed to uh, fill lots of prescriptions. Second is to start really thinking more like businessmen. And the third thing is um, we recognized we were going to have to get into some other niches. Uh, independent pharmacy is, is difficult if you're just simply focusing on the, on the meds. So we began the process probably in the 95, 96, 1997 of starting to open up. Literally, we were opening up almost a business a year. Um, and then other pharmacists out there that are listening to this or physicians that are listening to this podcast know that, you know, the government doesn't make anything easy. So every time you open up a new business, you've got to get new contracts, you've got to get new tax IDs. So at one point in time, we had seven different corporations. They were all kind of working together because we had to, to function all those, um, those all had to function separately in the marketplace. But we got into compounding, traditional compounding in our retail drug stores, which we ultimately had three of those. Um, you know, by BHRT, topical PLO gels, compounding for vets, for pedi- uh, for pediatrics, for dermatologists, a, a big compounding business. Uh, we, we got into the packaging pharmacy business. We had one local nursing home call us and say, you guys ever thought about packaging for nursing homes and assisted living homes? We said yes. So that began the institutional pharmacy run for us in the mid 90s, which ultimately grew across the state of Tennessee. We opened up a home infusion company, um, antibiotics, chemo, nutrition, hydration, pain management. Also during that run, uh, we, we got into the DME business, walkers, wheelchairs, hospital beds. We got into the respiratory business. Uh, we, we opened up a pretty big diabetic business along the way, which we, the strips and the meters and the diabetic shoes. Um, and, and then everything else across the board. You know, we formed a holding company for all the businesses could fit under it. We, we had a properties company to manage all of our real estate. And so Rick and I were involved in a lot of, Rick Sane and I were involved in a lot of different businesses all the way up through about 2010. So by the time we got to 2010, Todd, we had about 200 employees. We were doing about 40 million in revenue. Um, our business was incredibly uh, fragmented and diversified, but we found that our diversity was our strength as well as our weakness. I mean, uh, the diversity side of our business just required us to focus on so many different industries. When you've heard me mention there, we, we had retail pharmacies, we had institutional pharmacies, we had home infusion pharmacies, which all have their own nuances as far as the way to, to run them, but our diversity would make us strong because at any given time, you know, the way our industry changes so much, we'd be making money in something, you know? Yeah. I mean, long-term care might be on top, but our oxygen business might be collapsing because Medicare was making so many changes to competitive bidding. And we might have a window of time where our retail traditional compounding business was taking off, but our home infusion business might be going the wrong direction because a big local hospital might be entering a joint venture with another home infusion company. So our diversity gave us a bit, the ability to weather a lot of storms but it also caused us to have a lot of fragmentation in what we focused on. And that was up to about 2010, 2011. Then my business partner, again, who was a few years older than me, approached me in about, 2000, about 2010 and said, Shane, listen, we got 200 employees. We got six or seven corporations. He said, can, let's, let's, can we take some chips off the table? I would really like to exit something. Well, the problem is, and I'm sure some other pharmacists across the country have dealt with this in time. You, um, you, you, don't, want to, you don't want to sell your business that's on top. <laughs> the one that's generating all the revenue and all the EBITDA, you don't want to sell that one because if you do, you're, you're still going to be left with some other companies that are going to need cash. You're going to have some businesses you're trying to grow, and you might have some parts of your business that are going the wrong way that you might want to save as far as your cash is concerned. So we can never really find the right mix. Um, or the right timing to sell our businesses. 
Then in 2012, we had a friend of ours approach us and say, have you guys ever thought about getting into the specialty pharmacy business? And we told him at the time, said, the last thing in the world we need is another business. <laughs> We've got plenty going on. We got our hands in so many different things. Uh, this guy had a little bit of experience in the specialty world. Um, you know, this was five years ago. And we said, well, listen, we've got, a little, we've got a little closet area, literally in the back of our drugstore. If you want to go back in the back there and set up a specialty business, knock yourself out. <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's what independent entrepreneur pharmacists do, no matter what your settings might be, long-term care, hospital, or independent. You, you find a space and you kind of make it work if it makes sense. We gave this young, young man a, well, he's probably in his late 30s, early 40s. He's fairly young. Gave him a space and said, uh, sure, open up this little independent uh, specialty pharmacy business running under our Reeves Sane Drugstore umbrella. That corporation is what we were, we've been running under that corporation. We said, you can use our computer systems. You can use our HR department, our IT department, our, our, our branding, whatever you need to kind of get this going. You can use our tech to fill the prescriptions. So we formed a little business called Entrust, E-N-T-R-U-S-T. And that was in March of 2012, Todd, that we opened up this little Entrust business. And we happened to open it up at the exact same time that Savaldia was hitting the marketplace for the hepatitis. Okay. And we hit it almost the exact same time. We went through the process over all of March, of, over all of 2012 to get all the accreditations to start getting licensed in multiple states. And that one drug, and this was before Harvoni and some of the other products had even hit the market, that one drug just took off in the Middle Tennessee market. So by Christmas of 2012, December of 2012, that little specialty business, that little back office in Savaldia business was doing equivalent revenue to the entire rest of our company combined. Jeez. I mean, in nine months, nine months, it just exploded. And, and I'm sure there's other pharmacists out there that are, that are doing this, that have a similar, have had similar experiences. Now your gross profit's not as much. I mean, you're not making these, you know, 15, 20, 25% gross margins or 30% gross margins like you might see in uh, institutional, and certainly not 50% margins like you might see in home infusion. So your gross margins are much tighter, but whenever you're selling medications for $30,000 a pop, you don't need as much money <laughs> from a gross profit perspective. So by December of 2012, that little interest business had just exploded. It really did. By December of 2013, it was five times bigger than everything else we had combined. It was doing, you know, $20 million a month in revenue almost by itself. Um, and the rest of my business was still doing about four, four, four and a half. So we decided, you know what, let's take that little business to market and sell it. So in 2013, we began the process, well, 2014 actually began the process of taking that to market. We hired the brokers. We got the attorneys, the accountants, everyone that was involved. My former business partner, Rick Sane, was leading the charge on all of this. And in March of 2015, we sold that in-trust business, that, that pharmacy business, for a big multiple. Uh, we sold it to Fred's, the little retail pharmacy chain. They're not too little. The retail pharmacy chain out of Memphis came in and bought our specialty pharmacy business, in-trust. And when they bought it, they bought my little traditional family family business as well, the retail drugstore business at the same time. So then I spent all of 2015, um, after we had sold that, my business partner went to work for the, the other company. I was still had, I still had a packaging business, a medical equipment business, a respiratory business, still doing a lot of institutional pharmacy and spent all of 2012 really trying to decide what to do next. And so I decided to keep my very best people, my best products, my best processes, my best technology, and said, you know, I really think I want to focus on the best opportunities in the marketplace. And where I felt like the best opportunities in the marketplace were in 2015 and still feel today is really focusing all of our energies on the patients in our society who have got chronic, chronic complex, rare diseases, really going after those trying to identify about 10 to 15 of those diseases and trying to do all things pharma for them. So that's ALS and cystic fibrosis and multiple sclerosis and Crohn's and cancer and HIV, just the, the real super sick people. And we're trying to do all things pharmacy for them. So it's 
packaged medications, it's IV medications, it's you know, traditional non-sterile compounding medications. We're opening up infusion centers where people can come in and get their medication infused or given to them as well as getting it delivered at home. But any, all things pharma, <clears throat> we're trying to provide to those patients. And we're coupling that in the market. And, and this new company is called 12 Stone Health Partners. And uh, I called it that for a couple of reasons. One is because when I sold my business, I can no longer use the name Reeves. <laughs> they won't let me use the name Reeves on a, on a coffee shop. <laughs> for, for about five years, I can't use the name Reeves on anything from 20, 2012 moving uh, or 2015 moving forward. So I called it 12 Stone because I couldn't use the name Reeves. And also I called it the name 12 Stone because I was trying to find a, a name that could kind of you know, give us the chance to talk about the value prop we wanted to bring to the marketplace and also somewhat reflect our values. You know, faith and family and community and service is a big part of who we are at Reeves Sane and also at 12 Stone. So we pulled it and, and our new business is really about helping these super sick chronic patients make the transitions from acute care to post-acute care and stay home. So the 12 Stone name we pulled from an Old Testament story in the Bible. It's a, a guy named Joshua that led a million Israelites across the Jordan River to their promised land and they stacked 12 stones to commemorate that day. Well, we want to be that organization that gets out in the deep part of the river with the sickest of the sickest patients and help them make the transitions from their own acute care to post-acute care, from sickness to health, to try to help their own, to find their own promised lands. So the 12 stone name gives me the chance to talk a little bit about who we are from a values perspective, to also talk about our value prop of helping these patients to be able to be independent and be autonomous and be able to stay at home with these chronic diseases. And pharmacy is a big part of that, obviously. But we're also building partnerships in the marketplace with DME and respiratory and home health companies so these patients can stay at home. And we're also creating a technology platform so these patients can be in their home and have an app, be able to stay in touch with our pharmacy, stay in touch with the other providers, stay in touch with their physicians. And they're also going to be able to determine, it's almost like the Papa John's app. You'll know exactly where your meds are, when they're going to be delivered, um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And really our goal is for the sickest of the sickest patients to be able to stay at home for the rest of their lives and have everything they need at, at their house. Pharma, physician, physician access, home health, DME, and technology. So that's my new company. So, brother, that's a really long answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shane, it, it, it's, a, it's a testimony to who you and your family have been all these years within your community. And now of course it's sprouting out bigger than just your community, bigger than just the state. But this is the head scratcher for me. This is, you're a, I look okay. at this, at this successful entrepreneur in a healthcare space. That's hot. That's necessary. You finally put all the puzzle pieces together. Several of those puzzle pieces have, have evolved and disappeared into other uh, opportunities and 12 stone comes about and you've, kind of set everything up to really scale and, and continue to build. And then all of a sudden you obviously got some kind of calling as the servant leader that you are to, to take and to gamble in some ways, the stability of everything that you've grown and everything that you've built to run for state Senate, which to me, it's like this guy's got it all going on. He could continue to scale I don't want to say it's, it's easy at this point because nothing's ever easy, especially being an entrepreneur and building a business and having employees and having a family and having responsibilities. But you, you have this clear path that you've finally grown into and now you're deviating from that path and you're going to take the responsibility to run for state Senate. So how do we go from, from this long road of, of hard work and, and, and the success that you've, you've um, obtained, and now all of a sudden you're going to run for state senate. So that's, um, you know, I, I, look back on my, I look back on my life, and, you know, one thing I didn't mention along the way there is my father, my father when I was a young man, about 12 years old, also had, had run for office. He became a city councilman in our small small town of Murfreesboro, and he ultimately became mayor of our small community. So I was, I was exposed to public service through my father, who 
was running a little independent pharmacy. And I saw firsthand really the sacrifice that was involved with it, but you could also see the difference he was able to make in our small community as vice mayor and as mayor um, along the way. And he was clearly able, clearly able to do a lot of that. So I was exposed to public service. And so when I got out of pharmacy school, like I said, I was about 25, 26 years of age. I really wanted to make my way in the pharmacy sector. And I thought, you know, at some point in time, if the timing was right, I might jump into the public sector. Well, almost, I had been out of school about two years and I was about 28. I'm 50 today, by the way, for those who are wondering, I'm about 50. I just turned 50 in January. So when I was about 28, I got an opportunity. Somebody approached me and said, hey, Shane, you're this young pharmacist here in town. You're building this company. Uh, you ought to consider running for a local county commission seat. And I sat down with my dad. And as you can see, my dad's had a huge influence in my life, as well as my mother, who was an educator. Um, uh, I sat down with my dad and I said, hey, this opportunity has presented itself for me to run for, um, to run for county commission. And he gave me some of the best advice to this day that I can ever remember. And he said, you know, son, probably one of the best things you can do is to make your way in the private sector. You need to, you need to get married and you need to have children. You need to open a business. You need to pay some taxes. You need to hire some employees. You need to save some money. You need to spend some money. You need to give back to your community and to your church. You need to serve on some boards. He says, and you just need to get a sense of what it feels like to make your way in the private sector, personally, professionally, financially, spiritually, to really get a sense of all of that. And when the timing is right, you know, you'll be so much better equipped to serve in a public, public role than you, than you are, than you are now. So honestly, Todd, I had felt like that was probably never, never going to happen because, um, you know, I had opportunities in my 30s and in my 40s, and it just never seemed to be right. My children were always young. Uh, my business was always growing and very complex with a former partner. And I had really felt like the timing was just never going to be right. And so I'd kind of almost put that on the shelf and said, I'm going to make my way and make, try to make the difference in the world that I can in the private sector. And then I got a phone call last October from the, the existing state senator in my district in Middle Tennessee. And his name is Jim Tracy. And he said he'd been in there about 12 or 13 years. And he called me and said, have you ever thought about running for office? He said, I know you've always had an interest in, in public service, but you've never jumped in. Have you ever really thought about running for office? And uh, I said, you know, Jim, I've, I've, I've kicked it around, but the timing has never been right. And he said, well, listen, I'm about to take a job, a federal job with the Trump administration. And there's going to be an opening. Um, there's going to be an opening in my state Senate seat. It's going to be a special election if it's something you want to do, which means it's going to be all in hard as you can go for about 100 days. But if you choose to do it, you could be state senator and you could possibly get elected the next 100 days and um, it could, could, could really make a difference. And he said, we just need more business minded and healthcare minded specifically people in office. And he talked to some other people and had to have the governor involved. And they twisted my arm really, really hard, and I told him I would think about it. I said, how much time do I have to make a decision? He said, three days. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this was October of last year. He got about three days. So I got approached by this opportunity. So I talked to, went home and talked to my wife about it. And uh, like I said, my children are a little bit older. And she said, you know, Shane, you kind of something you've always wanted to do. And if it's something you really would like to jump into, maybe, maybe now's the time. So I got the house vote. You got to get the house vote, um, which, which is a big one. And then the next one, I went and I talked to my, um, my, my, my new business partners at 12 Stone. And I said, listen, listen, guys and gals. I said, you know, really my new role as CEO of 12 Stone really involves a few things. One is business development and networking. A second one is a lot of strategy and vision for the future of the company. A third thing is there's some people development that, that, that I'm involved in my company. And I could talk a lot about what we do to grow our people. And the fourth part is public policy. And I said, I can make the case that serving in the state Senate really does two things, even for 12 stone. One is obviously, obviously public policy trying to drive and make a difference in the issues that are impacting pharmacy and healthcare so much and business. 
And the second thing is uh, business development, growth, and networking. Clearly, as a state center, I'm going to meet a lot of people, which will, which could help for the company. Anytime somebody looks up Shane Reeves, they're going to see 12 Stone. So we talked about it as a group, and I told him it's a special election. I was going to approach it with open hands. I'm going to go at it as hard as I can. And if we get if I get elected, great. We'll, we'll see what it looks like, and I'll try to serve for a period of time. And if I don't get elected, that's fine, too. I've got 12 Stone. So November 1, I jumped into this crazy world of politics, my friend, and it has been a crazy, crazy ride. Um, I approached it a lot the way I pro- practice, uh, have uh, approached running my business. I've got a great team around me. We had a good message. Um, I raised the money to be successful in my primary race. And on January 25th, I won the primary um, in, in, my, in my district, Republican primary. Middle Tennessee is very, very conservative, very, very Republican. So uh, that was really the race. But I still have a, a I don't know when this podcast is going to run, Todd, but I've still got a general race on March 13th. Early voting actually starts two days from now. So if there's any pharmacists or physicians or anyone out there who wants to know more, more about my campaign, by all means, you can go into reeves 4 tn Dot com. I'd love to have your thoughts and support and contributions, whatever you want to do to help me with that. But March 13 is going to be my general race. And if that happens, then I'll be sworn in as a state senator in late March. And the way the Tennessee Senate works is we, we generally get out about the third week of April. So for the rest of the year, from May to December, I will be a state senator, but I'll be out of session. So I'll still be able to work in my business actively for about eight months and still be a state senator for, for the rest of the rest of the time meeting the needs of the district moving forward. So really it's the first four months of the year that I'm in Nashville, in the General Assembly, all in, hands-on, being the full-time state senator. The rest of the year, I'm a big believer in just citizen legislators. I'll be working in my company you know, the majority of the time in serving as a state center on the side. So to answer the big, big question, the timing is right. I have the support from my family, my business. I feel like my capabilities are right at the age of 50. I'm a good strategist. I'm a good problem solver. I'm innovative. I'm decisive. And I think I can make a real difference in the state of Tennessee and fight for some of the things that, uh, that I care about, uh, families and business and healthcare, which were the things that are important to me. So, again, that's a long answer, but um, it's just the stars of all aligned. But, you know, as of today, which is when I'm recording this with you in late February, I haven't been elected yet, but I'm working hard to get elected. <laughs> well, we will push this out uh, to all of our networks to get the message out there about your vision for the state of Tennessee and, and beyond. Um, I think that health care is still a huge um, question mark and debacle and needs as much insight as possible from um, leaders that understand it intimately. So when we have Buddy Carter in public office and when we have Shane Reeves in public office and encouragement, if you're listening to this podcast and you're at a stage in your career that you're thinking about, public office and leadership. We need more healthcare professionals in public office. So Shane, that's why I was excited. I, I know you from reputation. I sold your you and your business partner a pharmacy management system long ago. I remember right. dealing with your organization and your and just your people, just good, good people. So when I heard you were running, I was excited and definitely wanted to help uh, get the word out at least through the the podcast network and we're excited. So I expect to have you back on the show as uh, the senator of the great state of Tennessee, maybe in about right. nine or 10 months when you settle in. And um, what what is your uh, closing words and thoughts as, as someone who's on the knife's edge from uh, private uh, world and entrepreneurship to uh, teetering into a much greater limelight in, in the world of public office? Well, first, thank you again for having me on on the show. Um, and, I, and I would love to, at some point in time, Todd, get back on here, because I spent a lot of time today talking about me and my background and my experience and how I got to this point. I have a lot to say about healthcare and a lot to say about pharmacy, where I see pharmacy going in the future, um, what I specifically love to do as a state senator to continue to try to provide a platform for pharmacists to be successful. 
I have a lot of thoughts just about healthcare in general, and I just don't think we're going to get a lot of meaningful reforms that are going to work state to state out of Washington. So I'm going to suggest a lot of things at a state level in Tennessee that I believe can make a difference in our healthcare system. So I'd love at some point in time to talk, come on your show and just talk about that because people are going to care about that. For, for anyone out there who's listening to you, you know, just be open to the opportunities and the risk that are presented to you as you get older. I mean, I made my way in the private sector. The first 25 years of my life is a lot about gathering the necessary tools and education to be successful. The next 25 years of my life have been all about building this business. And so I, I just, we need more, we need more business minded and pharmacy minded and healthcare minded people serving in office that are trying to shape, shape the, uh, shape legislation for, for our future. We, I mean, our, we just can't simply sit back and let other people drive, drive our future. We've got to have some, some impact on that. So be bold pharmacists and physicians and dentists and whomever else will listen to you, be bold and take some risk. Um, don't miss out on those opportunities. You just have no idea what, uh, you know, what, what, uh, what God has in store for your future. So take some chances. Well, Shane, I've uh, enjoyed having you on the Pharmacy Podcast. We have a new show launching soon called Polititalk Rx. It's for uh, the world of healthcare law and the world of pharmacy and talking about rules, regulations, policies, PBMs, things that, you know, keep uh, pharmacy owners and pharmacy management teams uh, up at night. So uh, we'll probably have you back on that segment which will be the 18th segment uh, part of the actual network, which is uh, just growing and we're excited. So best of luck and God bless to you in the great state of Tennessee. We can't wait to uh, be celebrating with you when you uh, take office and um, look forward to interviewing you again. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you very much. Look look forward to uh, next steps. Thank you. Thank you. You were listening to the Pharmacy Podcast with Shane Reeves with 12 Stone. You can learn more about them at 12stonehealth.com. Once again, that's 12stonehealth.com. We thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Podcast. Pharmacy Podcast.